In this video, we're going to continue to work on our annual planner template, and I'm going to show you how to create this section down below where you're going to be able to rate your volume and intensity on a 1 to 10 scale, and then have the color automatically change to reflect that rating, as well as this graph down below where you're going to be able to select the type of cycle that you want to put your athlete through, and then have the colors and the graph automatically update to reflect that change. This is going to be a really powerful way to visualize your volume and intensity and cycles. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and we are starting with the sheet as we left it off in the last video. And you can see in the last video, we created these two sections for primary focus, secondary focus of our movement skills and primary and secondary focus for our ESD. Now in this video, we're going to go through how to create the volume and intensity as well as the cycle planner. So the first thing we're gonna do, like we do with all these videos, is I'm just going to leave another row where I can differentiate between the two um, sections. So I'll go to, in this case, row 53, right click, resize, and I'm gonna put that down to 10. And that just gives me a little space there. And for this one, I know I'm going to need um, three rows, so I'll just merge and center these first three here. And the titles I'm going to give these are phase selection, intensity, 1 to 10, and volume, 1 to 10. And then from there, what I'm going to do is just put a highlighting box all the way around here. I like to use the thick border for these, as well as I'll put one around my titles here. And then... Also, maybe I'll put one under my face selection. So you can see I've just separated this out. And then between these, I'm going to put some dotted um, dividers. So I'll just change that back to the dotted. So this is the main structure of our actual box. And then down below, what we're going to have is um, a spot where we create a graph based on the, the phase selection. So um, in this case, row 57, we're just going to resize that down to 10. And then I'm going to create the graph. So the cycles that I like to use are performance, load plus, load, um, base phase, and a deload. And these are just terms, um, how I term my cycles. And I took these from um, the Strength Coach Playbook and Joe Ken's work. And then on the side, because this is going to be a workload graph, I'm just going to highlight all of these and type in workload. And I'm going to shift this so it's sideways. So there's a text rotation tool up here. And I can actually put the text sideways. And then using my center, I can actually put this in the center there. So I'm going to put a large box around all of this now. And then around this phase, this workload phase here, and then around my phases. And then through here, I like to again have some dotted lines. So I think that looks pretty good. Now for this, what I want is um, a drop down box here where I can select from my phases. So I'm just going to go into all of these and highlight them. And I'm going to go to data data validation, and we're going to create a list. So it's a list of items. And let's just use the first letter from these phases. So I'm gonna say P comma L plus comma L comma B comma D. And to me, those stand for performance, load plus, load, base, and deload. And I'll hit save. And now I should be able to select any of these different cells. So from there now, what I want this, these cells to do is actually color based on the variable that I've selected. So what I'm going to do is create a conditional format here that looks at the different cells and then gives them a color. Down here on the workload graph, let's figure out what those colors are first. So I'm gonna bold all of these so that they show up better. My performance cycle, I'm gonna to want to be sort of a bright red color. My load plus, I usually like to use an orange then a yellow, then green. And then my deload, I like to use like a blue. So we'll use this pale blue. So these are gonna be the colors that we're going to color our 
phase selection based off of. So what I'm going to do here is highlight all of these and I'm going to create a conditional format here. So I'm going to go to format, conditional formatting, and let's go to text is exactly. And if it is P, then I want the whole phase or the whole cell to be highlighted in red. So I'll hit done. To check if this works, I should be able to select P and you can see now the whole thing is highlighted in red. So I'm gonna hit done. I'm gonna do that for all of the different colors. So I'll add another rule here. Text is exactly L plus. And if it is, we want it to be that orange color. Done. Add another rule. Text is exactly L. And if it is, we want it to be that yellow color. And add another rule. Text is exactly um, in this case, it is the B, and if it is, we want it to be that green color, done. And for the last one, text is exactly D, and if it is, we want it to be that blue color. And then I'll hit out of this, and I should now be able to select the different colors. Oh, you can see that it's only applied to the first one. So we had an issue where the formatting wasn't applying to the other cells. So an easy way to fix that is after we've got it the way that we want it, what we can do here is just copy this cell, control C, and then what I can do is highlight all of the cells that I want to paste to, and I can right click, go to paste special, and then paste the format only. And now what happens is, is when I actually select from these cells, that same conditional formatting will go across all of the different cells. Now, just like up above, when we had to turn our date sideways, in Google Sheets, since the drop-down menu sits right in the cell, it's a good idea that we can take these cells and actually rotate the text so that it's up so that we can see the text that's actually in the cell there. And then one final thing that we're gonna fix is just at the end here, our, um, our border got kind of moved, so I'm just going to highlight all of these cells and just put our border back. So again, we'll just use the border tool there and we'll just put it back to that thick border. So that's part one. And now part two, we wanna create a scale for this volume and intensity. So what I'm going to do is actually highlight all of these cells here. And again, we're gonna add a conditional format. So I'm gonna to go to format, conditional formatting, and then use a color scale. And in this case, I want it to be a red color scale where the maximum value is a dark red. So let's see what this looks like. If I type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, what you can see is that this just automatically colors darker red the higher the number gets to. And this is gonna be important because I like to use the color red to signify my intensity and then the color blue to signify my volume. So I'm gonna hit done there. And then for the volume, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna highlight all of these cells and add a rule for a color scale of, I don't know, let's say we'll choose this red again, but instead we'll make it this blue value. And then the middle value, what we'll do is, no, we're gonna to have to make this custom. So let's see what this looks like right now as it is. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So that actually seems to work pretty well. So all we did was create our color scale and then just make the top value that blue and it automatically is going to shift all the colors that way. So that is now part two. Now finally what I wanna do is to create that graph effect at the bottom, we're gonna use a conditional format to check whether, which one of these is selected and depending on which one's selected, we're gonna add a highlight or a background color to these cells. So what this is gonna look like is I'm going to highlight all of these cells and I'm going to go to format and conditional formatting one more time. And this time what I'm gonna do is use a formula. So my custom formula is going to be equals and the cell that we wanna look at in this case is D54. So D54 and I'm going to lock in the 54 because the row is never going to change. And when that is equal to quotations, P quotations, what I wanna do is fill up that whole cell with red. So let's see what that might look like. And you can see now it's colored in that whole, all those cells with red. And I want this 
to apply to the range of D58 all the way to, well, I'm just gonna select the range. So I want this to apply to the range of D58 all the way across and hit okay. And because we've left this reference open with the dollar sign there, if we go across here, it should work on any one of these different um, cells. So I'm gonna hit done there. Then for our next one, what I'm going to wanna do is create another range, but because the load will never go any higher than the load um, on the side here, all I have to do is highlight that next set of cells. In this case, we want D59 all the way to BD62. Um, and I'm going to hit add another rule and I'm gonna use a custom formula again. So we'll go down to the bottom and in this case we want equals D dollar sign um, 54 is equal to quotations L plus quotations. And when it is, we want it to color into that orange color and then I'll hit done. And we're gonna continue this process for all of the different um, cells. So we're gonna do the load next. So I'll highlight those cells. And I'm gonna add another rule. And in this case, custom formula, we want equals D dollar sign um, 54 one more time is equal to quotations L quotations. And when it is, we want it to color in that yellow color and I'm gonna hit Done. I'm actually going to just copy this because I'm going to paste it for the next two. Done. We'll add one more, we'll add two more rules. So add another rule. Custom formula is, in this case, we want it when it's equal to base, which is B. We're going to make it that green color and done. We'll do one more just for this bottom row here and add another rule. Custom formula same formula but this time we want when it's equal to d give it that blue color that we like and i'll hit done close the conditional format and right away now we have the ability to select any of our different highlighters or signifiers and you can see that the graph gets automatically colored in and this is just a really easy way to start to visualize um, the different cycles that you might run. You might want to run this with percentages up the right side. I've seen that done. You might want to run this with um, different qualities that you're working on, but this is one way that I will visualize the workload in the annual plan templates that I put together. So I hope this trick helps you out. And if it does, please like and subscribe to the channel. And in the next video, what we're going to do is finalize all the formatting and everything on this template and make it ready to be used um, with the teams that you work with. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you.